there are some very specific rules for parallel and perpendicular lines and how to find them. For parallel lines, we have to recognize that the slope of the compared lines have to be the same. In the, this case, the first line is has a rise of 2 and a run of 5. So my first slope is 2 fifths. If I compare that to the second line on the graph, I have, again, a rise of 2 and a run of positive 5. So my parallel slope is equal to 2 fifths. If I look at the perpendicular lines, it tells me that it's perpendicular, but I can always check. If I have a rise of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's my rise, and a run of negative 2, my first slope is going to be 5 over negative 2, or negative 5 halves. Let's compare that to the second line to see if it really is a perpendicular line. Rise of 2, run of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the other slope is 2 over positive 5. So this is a perpendicular slope. So we can compare parallel lines or see if lines are parallel if the slopes are the same. Perpendicular lines are the opposite reciprocals of each other. And then there are the odd occasions where you will find two lines that are neither parallel or perpendicular. Let's look at the different slopes and see how they compare. The first one has a rise of 2 and a run of 1, 2, 3, 4 in the negative direction. So the first slope is 2 over negative 4, which reduces to negative 1 half. If we compare that to the second line, we've got a slope of rise of 2, run of negative 2. So this slope is 2 over negative 2, or negative 1. These are not the same slope, so they can't be parallel, and they are not the negative reciprocals of each other, so they're not perpendicular. So these are neither. There are no patterns. Okay, let's look at example 1. One line goes through 5, 2, and 7, 5, and another line goes through negative 2, negative 6, and 0, negative 3. Are the lines parallel, perpendicular, or neither? First, we have to find the slopes of each line. m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. This gives us 5 minus 2 over 7 minus 5, which is the same as 3 over 2. Now let's take the second line, labeling them as one, point 1 and point 2, we'll get slope again, 
y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, which gives us negative 3 minus negative 6 over 0 minus negative 2. This is equal to negative 3 plus 6 over positive 2 or 3 halves. If we look at these two, two slopes to compare them to see if the lines are the same, they are indeed exactly the same, so they must be parallel lines. In example two, we have to do the same process again. To find the slope, we use the slope formula y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. This gives us, if we label our two points, point 1 and 2, we get 3 minus 1 over negative 1 minus negative 4. This simplifies to 2 over negative 1 plus 4 or 2 thirds. Comparing that to our second line that goes through these points, I'll label them as point 1 and 2 again and find my slope. One way to remember that the y's go in the top and the x's go in the denominator is to think that y represents the rise and x represents the run or rise over run. Substituting in, we get negative 7 minus 1, sorry, minus negative 1 over 6 minus 2. Simplifying, we get negative 7 plus 1 over 6 minus 2 or 4. Finally, we get negative 6 over 4 and when we reduce that fraction, we get negative 3 halves. Since this is the opposite reciprocal of this slope up here, this has to be a perpendicular slope. Finally, in example three, we again have two lines. The first line, we get negative 8 minus 7 over negative 6 minus 3. This gives us negative 15 over negative 9. This reduces to negative 5 over negative 3 or five-thirds. If we find the slope of the second line, we get negative 4 minus 2 over negative 5 minus 5. This gives us negative 6 over negative 10. This reduces to negative, or sorry, positive three-fifths. Since these lines are reciprocals but not negative reciprocals of each other, they are neither parallel or perpendicular.